Welcome. Hello, viewers. Welcome to the program English Takeaway with Sani Sambo, a program where together we learn functional English that helps to polish our English language skills in both speech and writing. And this will also enhance our daily communications. My name is Sani Ahmed Sambo, and this is Daybreak Television. By tradition, we sometimes learn English language or other languages starting from parts of speech. Among scholars, whether or not this is the best way to do it. For the purpose of this lesson, we shall begin with parts of speech. This will help us to lay a solid foundation towards understanding of what we intend to teach or to learn from this lesson. And this will not stop us from learning functional vocabularies and some useful expressions that will help also to enhance our daily communications uh, using the English language. We begin with now. But in this particular video of about five, seven minutes, I hope at the end of this lesson, we should be able to identify nouns wherever we see them, we know their meanings, and we know how they are used, especially in a connected speech. Now, before we begin, I want you to take some few minutes to look at things around you. If you are in your living room, for instance, you might see so many items, so many objects, and so many things around. Perhaps you may see your ceiling fan, a refrigerator. You could also see a chair or a seater in your parlor. You could also see your television set. You could see your bed. You could see your wardrobe. You could see your table. And you could see so many other things in your living room or in your bedroom. If you are in your garden, for instance, or at the backyard, you might see some of your, you have a cat or a pet, like dog. You might also see your goat. You might see your fowl. You might see so many other things that you have kept in that small garden at the back of your house. If you are in the main road, for instance, you might, your eyes might catch a glimpse of maybe students or pupils, you know, uh, crossing the road. You might also see a policeman. You could also see the mocks around you or the church or so many other things by the roadside. And if you are in the market, for instance, you could see different shops with different items. Maybe you pack a rice, back of rice, beans, guinea corns. You see tomatoes, you see onions, and you see virtually various things in the market. That is how it is everywhere you go. In the River Rhine area, in the forest, wherever you put your eyes, suddenly you see one or two things as objects or items. All these have names. And these names are what we use to identify them. And these names are what we mean by nouns. Simple. Nothing more than that. But let me tell you also, there are other abstract ideas, other, abs uh, sorry, concepts. We have other abstract ideas, concepts, qualities that you cannot see, feel, or touch with your Naked eyes, you can't see them with your hands, you can't touch them, although sometimes you might feel them, but they don't exist in our physical world. They don't have a physical existence or presence. They only exist in our world of imagination or in our thinking. These are also nouns, but we call them abstract nouns. Now, you can see that that is the main reason why most scholars will simply define a noun as a name of a person, animals, place, or things. But you also add abstract ideas, concepts, or qualities. That is what you mean by nouns. And nothing more than that. So I will be right to say that nouns means names. Means what? names. They are very important in learning a language because nouns in English 
represent a very reasonable or large number of words that we have in English language. The first sentence, the man saw her coming. The noun in this sentence is man. And what will help you to even know that it is a noun is the presence of the article the. Anytime you see the, a, or an, definitely it will be followed by a noun or sometimes before the noun, some adjectives. Then we also have the monkey looks like a dog. The two nouns there are monkey and dog. The third sentence we have go to the school and read. The only noun in that sentence is school. Cook the food and eat it. The only noun in that sentence is food. Then the last sentence or the fifth sentence, yellow bought a motorcycle. The only noun in that sentence is motorcycle, coming at the end. A noun can come in the beginning, it can also come in the middle. In most cases, it comes in the, in the, at the end, in the middle or at the end. Not always in the middle, because the middle normally, there is another part of speech or a category that normally occupies the middle position, but it's not always. So now I want you to think of other examples of nouns. You can check some books and try to underline the nouns you have. Like I said, I will treat this in a greater detail when I come to treat the next video, which is to do with types of nouns. If you enjoy this video, you could subscribe to this channel, download the video, share with your young ones, and let us learn English together. My name is Sani Ahmed Sambo.